If you have some super awesome melody, you can totally destroy it by applying a terrible rhythm. But if you only have one single note, you can apply some great rhythm and it's going to sound pretty cool. Hi and welcome to this video. My name is Janis and I'm actually a drummer and you might ask yourself, okay, why should I learn how to make better melodies from a drummer? And it's a valid point. But I feel like there's a misconception about what is really important for melodies because people always think about the notes like the intervals and the scales and the actual tones. But rhythm is equally as important and maybe even more important because just think of this. If you have some super awesome melody, you can totally destroy it by applying a terrible rhythm. But if you only have one single note, you can apply some great rhythm and it's going to sound pretty cool. And that's also the first example I want to share with you because I'm going to play a one note melody on my drum pad and I invite you to try the same with whatever you want to use. So you can use some instrument, you can do it inside the door and just explore how far you can go with this one note and only applying changes to rhythm or articulation. So this is how this one note melody looks like inside the MIDI grid and I want to point out a few things because one thing I often see as a problem with melodies is that it's focused too much on the bar lines. So there are too many notes that always play the one. So for example the drums play the one, the bass plays the one and if everything always plays on the one it's going to sound static and especially with the melody that has some kind of special feature inside the arrangement it sounds usually great if it's the more free floating element and if you look at this one note melody you see that I play the one in the first bar but then here from bar one to two it's overlapping, from bar two to three it's also overlapping and from bar three to four it's also overlapping. Also I can recommend to use groups of three because they can make your melodies a little more playful. So here you can see that there are notes that last for three steps, this one for example or this one, this one, this one and there are actually some more. Because if you always use the duration of two steps or four steps or eight steps, you stay in the kind of conventional rhythmic territory. So it can work this way, but also it might sound a little static. And three is some irregular number, so you actually put notes on some 16th note positions. And this way you just get some nice balance between notes that are on the beat and off the beat. And also you can see that there's quite some repetition here. So this motif of a note that lasts for three steps and then one that lasts for a little longer, you can see more often because you see the repetition right in the beginning. And again, it's happening here it's happening here and it's happening here. So it's also great to look for small rhythmic fragments that you can actually repeat. And that's quite a solid foundation where now we could consider adding a second or third pitch moving some of those positions to another pitch. And we'll do that in a second but first I want to share something else with you that I find incredibly inspiring to do with one note melodies. Because if you add some bass you have some incredible flexibility in what kind of bass notes you can add. And let me share some examples with you. Without having made any changes to the melody it already sounds way more exciting simply through adding some bass. And finding the bass notes can be really intuitive because if you let the one note melody play you just look for like three notes maybe that sound cool with the melody and then you just arrange it in a certain order. And now we can finally add some tone variation to the melody and again we can use the bass line for that because it already shows us some potential notes that we can use. So here we have the A sharp, G, F and D and the D is actually also the one note melody note that I was using. So we can maybe use some of those for adding some first variations. So we can add over, head over to the melody and sometimes move notes. So maybe the second one I feel like could move to the F for example. Then we go back to the root note and maybe the fifth note can go even higher to the G. And let's see how this sounds like. <laughs> 
you can just continue like that or you can also try to find out what tonality you're in because then you have even more tones to choose from which can be cool and if we draw in the last remaining note which was the A sharp and fold you can in Ableton click on scale and then it highlights those lines and if they are green it means they are all part of the scale so for example in other scales it wouldn't highlight all the notes and once you found out what kind of scale you're in you can unfold and then you see actually more potential notes that you can use and can see what kind of effect they have on the melody and let me show you what I actually came up with in the end And to round this up, let's actually listen to this with a cool sound because it's great to compose on a piano, but it's way more fun to then send it into other sounds. So here's how it sounds like through my Vermona performer. I actually really like it. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoy exploring this technique and if you still need some more input just check out this playlist here. Also be known that I have a full online class dedicated to the subject of rhythm so you can effectively learn how to use rhythm for making your music more exciting and I'll link it down below in the description. Apart from that I wish you lots of inspiration with whatever it is that you create and hope to see you soon again at this channel. Bye.